Hey everyone, welcome back to the workshop. Artisan Power here, and in today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys a full tour of the Artisan Power at Workshop and the scroll saw setup and all that I use. I'm really excited to do that. It's one of my most requested videos when people comment down in the comments below or over in the community forum or over on Instagram. People are always asking for it, so I thought it was finally time to do that. And I just figured the beginning of 2021 would be a great way to start out. As always, I hope you had a happy and safe Christmas 2020 and a happy New Year 2021, however you was able to celebrate. I know with everything going on in the world, things are drastically different from how they normally are celebrated at the end of the year. So I just hope everybody remains safe and you're staying healthy and all. I got to see some family I don't normally get to see, so that's always awesome and hang out with them. As you probably already noticed, behind me the sticker swap sticker wall has grown again and I took the sticker swap sticker box down. It's elsewhere in the workshop. You will see it momentarily as I'm giving the tour. And I added some more panels to the wall and added some stickers that were actually thumbtacked to the wall already on it. But this is just a blessing for how quickly this is filling up. It's a wall of motivation for me. And remember, if you guys ever want an Artisan Pirate sticker, all you've got to do is send me a message and I will get one out to you. All my contact info is down in the description box below and I'll be more than happy to add your sticker up on the sticker swap sticker wall. Now, the only way I know how to do this shop tour is to take the camera off the mounted tripod. So there may be some shakiness in it. Please forgive me for that. This is my first time filming like this free-handed out here in the workshop. I'm going to begin as I come in the front door. So, without further ado, let's get the shop tour started. And here we have the shop door with my name above it. That was a YouTube video once upon a time, a long time ago when I very first started. But as you come into the workshop, you can see the world that is in my mind. And as always, I usually make a beeline right here to the scroll saw and start scrolling and as a lot of you will know what I love to make is the scroll saw compound cut keychains this one I did for a YouTube video and then I also have one that says Myrtle Beach the city I love to go to when on vacation but those are the heart and soul of this workshop my grandfather built this workshop from the ground up and I'm going to begin right here behind the door. And this is the new home of the Sticker Swap Sticker Box. I'm going to let it go around. This was the first um, thing I made to display stickers. And I was humbled by how quickly it filled up. I thought, man, I'll never fill that up. But then it got full within six months swapping stickers. And then I eagerly made the Sticker Swap Sticker Wall that I'm now adding stickers to. I have my Cartoon Network banner here from Wacky Racing when they had a NASCAR car on the circuit and the banner hides the panel box and then there's just a few tin signs right here. Here is some of my grandfather's hand saws and the meat cleavers are actually my great grandfather's. And right up here in the eaves, if you can see it, is it's sentimental to me it wouldn't be to other people but it is the remains of my grandfather's last garden which was collard plants I picked a few of them and tied them and let them hang up there and dry out like tobacco leaves would do and they've been hanging there ever since he passed in 2012 coming down here you see what I am now calling the hardware store lots of nuts and bolts and washers and screws and fittings here also key rings for the keychains I make that is a recent addition and you can see I braced them up with pocket screws stepping back here is the original Sears Craftsman 17 inch 16 speed 3 quarter horsepower drill press I am 6 foot 2 and this top of it here comes up to my nose so it is a massive machine it is very heavy and sturdily built and it comes on great it has a light and I use this all the time to drill pilot holes for internal work on scroll sawing and everything I have boxes of drill bits down here guides extra tape measures 
Um, that box down there is full of older drill bits that my grandfather had. There's a small air compressor here behind the door with a hose for blowing off scroll work. Once I sand it, I usually prop the door open and blow it off with the air hose. Here is my Godzilla poster and I bought this at Comic Con and framed it and hung it up behind the door. I just thought it was I just love the artwork in the old school movie posters. Really cool. Now in the summer this door stays propped open and unfortunately the sticker box will be blocked but it is what it is. This was the only place I really had to hang the box and have it in a visible spot if that makes any sense. Coming around here as you come in the front door here is the wood stove. This was again my grandfather's 99% of the stuff out here was my grandfather's and it came into my possession when he passed. Um, this plays a crucial role for me with my woodworking story and as you can see I've got some wood in there now keeping the shop warm and it vents out through this pipe and it goes up the side of the building and vents out and also behind the stove there is my pipe clamps I only have three because I don't do that many glue ups right now. I mean, I plan to get more. But the wood stove is the beginning of my woodworking journey. When I was 14 years of age, I wanted to come out here and sit by the wood stove and the heat and listen to my grandfather's stories. And he had an old coffee pot. And he made stovetop coffee. And it is hanging right there. Very sentimental to me. Also one of his old railroad lanterns and level and old levels here beside the door. Um, this is just where my woodworking journey started. Um, talking to him out here sharing stories and then I noticed the tools and wanted to get into woodworking and he took me under his wing at 14 years of age and taught me and that is where everything started for me. So this is always sentimental for me. It wouldn't be a lot. Not all treasure is silver and gold. I keep that firmly in mind and this is just every time I look at this and feed scraps of wood to it or something I think about my grandfather and then over here on the back wall is my bucket collection and my tin man that I picked up he is sort of like the mascot of the shop I picked him up at an artist vendor place I think he was like $25 I was happy to pay that and support other artists and here is my bucket collection Everybody always asks when they see this in post what are in the buckets and it's really nothing. I've got a few odds and ends, a few scraps of exotic woods in it that I just keep put back. My strap clamps I think are in this Lowe's bucket where I can easily access them. And in case anyone was wondering, the stove, the heat from the stove does not affect anything in this area. Not at all because there is plenty of clearance all the way around it. There is up to a foot and a half to two foot of clearance for everything. I know it don't look like it on camera but it is and none of this stuff on the wall ever gets hot. But I just like collecting buckets. The Kmart bucket especially is a fine one for me because I know Kmart's going by the wayside and then the original Sears Craftsman bucket I know they're also going by the wayside. I'm glad Lowe's picked them up. Here is my scrap wood pile and as you can see it is a lot of scraps. I have cedar. I have hard maple. I have black walnut. I have so many types of just different types of scraps of wood here. I've got some live edge wood tucked there in the back but always good to come and look through this pile and get things going and find something for a project. And speaking of projects that leads to the scroll saw display wall. You see me do this a lot in Instagram stories. I will pan across and just go through it slowly and we'll take a closer look of it here in the minute but one of my favorite pieces on here is the twin dragon piece in the Celtic cross and I made that when I was I think 16 or 17 and I made that on the old Delta scroll saw I had the two speed one and it has over like I think like 300 internal cuts and it was just the masterpiece for me at that time and now one of my favorite pieces is this Santa Claus portrait we just celebrated Christmas and that is because that I made that with spiral blades uh, that was my very first project using those Sterling Davis finally convinced me to give them a try you see more scroll saw keychains hanging here 
the steampunk gears piece I really like the kiss portrait the Indian portrait I made my mom and then she gave it back to me to hang out here when she converted her living room into a beach theme a lot of these patterns are Steve Good designs and then also some of them are from scroll saw woodworking crafts and creative woodworks and crafts magazines but you can kinda just look and see the evolution of my woodwork here we have the God Bless America Patriot Clock I made all out of pine wood and you see another clock I made back there and I had to take the clock face out of that one to put in here I've gotta go and pick up another clock face to put in that one then right here is my grandfather's workbench and this has so much sentimental value to me and I mean I get emotional talking about it because of how many times I stood right here at this area and watched him put together something or make something or create something and listen to his stories as he was teaching me this is his old vice here that I use a lot and this is not the original location of this table I moved it over here I know it looks natural with the display wall but this is just something I just recently moved here to make more foot room and floor space out in the shop bunch of various tools under here the air tools for the air compressor the brad nailer the nail gun my dado stack for the table saw blade compound miter saw black and decker original black and decker um, circular saw which was my grandfather's a little blower to blow the floors off out here this corner set I've got and on the floor underneath it's just cases of tools that my grandfather had and just collected throughout the years here is a bucket for scrap wood where I can take it and throw it into the wood stove and then starting here we have the lathe that I picked up and it runs great I've had it now going on three years I think two three years and it starts right up here are my lathe tools and this is stuff that I picked up at Harbor Freight these are not high quality tools I don't know how to sharpen tools that well so I didn't want to buy an expensive set and then damage them trying to learn how to sharpen them there's my face shield again this was the more expensive set and this is their new twenty dollar set that just came out so I picked them up and then this is something I recently made with them this is a spalted goblet I haven't got any kind of finish on it yet but I made that and here are some other goblets I made probably my favorite one is this one made out of cedar and spruce I call it the checkerboard goblet because of how it looks on the bottom and then this one I made this is called the chaos goblet because of just how random the wood is placed and this is black walnut and uh, maple but just some of the stuff I made and then this goblet here was the first time I ever tried using resin in a project again nice little setup I want to get into turning pins that was the main reason I bought this lathe for myself for a Christmas present to myself and I have yet to turn my first pin so I mean that's just how plans kinda go you get it for one thing then end up making other things like the goblets and all here is my box of sandpaper that I use for both hand sanding for scroll saw projects and also for wood turning projects I can just pick it up and carry it wherever I'm sanding something it's got all the grits in there and it is clean spore sandpaper it's through the grits it's rolls in there here's some bigger stickers that I did not put on the wall and here is my Harbor Freight belt sander and just like the wind lathe it fires right up I know a lot of people kind of think it's a cheaper brand but it works for what I'm using it for and I'm very happy with it right here is my grandfather's um, Sears Craftsman router and Sears Craftsman router table it's got a Roman OG profile bit in it and I like this smaller setup because I can pick it up and take it outside and use it this tool this tool and the lathe are probably the three messiest tools I have and the belt sander and the router table I can pick up and set on a table outside and go to work and not have to worry about the mess as much but there is that swinging over here to the other side this was the original location of my grandfather's workbench when you come right in the door there was his the vice was right here 
and right here where you could easily clamp something and start working on it so this was the original location of that and I moved it to just free up a lot more floor space you see I have some dry wood in here for the wood stove there's my broom to clean up with and my shovel to clean out the um, stove once it has burned down to ashes here is a bunch of scrap quarter inch plywood quarter inch plywood is one of the most used materials out here in this workshop and here is my folding portable workbench from Harbor Freight with an auxiliary table you see me spray stuff on this you see me stain stuff on it I really love this little table it was 25 bucks I think and you couldn't beat it for that deal again I can clamp my planer to it I can clamp the router table to it the belt center to it and take it outside and not have to worry about the mess or clean up and just let it fall out in the yard right here is a scrap box I bent out of half inch plywood and you can see the Jimmy DeResta logo on there, a couple pirate logos and the Sea Captain logo. I just let scraps fall here and then some of my more commonly used scraps are in here as well. Up on this wall is kind of a eclectic sort of everything because this was above my grandpa's table and he just kind of set stuff everywhere. He used medicine bottles to store everything and I've kind of carried on that tradition. That and coffee cans. And then here is my little memorial area for my grandfather great man and I miss him dearly there's a picture of me when I was a kid with him at the local feed and seed store there was his shop sign and his beekeepers association of the world um, plaque he was a beekeeper um, a homemade belt he made with his name on it his hat from tractor supply that was one of the last hats he had a couple of his homemade tools but I just like to take a moment out here sometimes and just sit here and remember all the good times with my grandfather. Um, stepping back here when you come in, here is the table saw. This is the cobalt table saw, the folding portable one, the job site saw, and I like it. You know, the fence isn't the best fence in the world. I've got a Harbor Freight blade in it. I use a lot of pine, a lot of cedar, everything, my homemade push block haven't bit the bullet and bought a gripper yet but I use this and it works perfectly and as you can see this is where the tripod sits most of the time when I'm filming the intros and outros to the videos and you can see back here the sticker swap sticker wall but moving right along we have my grandfather's Delta 16 inch motorized bandsaw and I've decorated it with some stickers and some magnets another great powerful tool I know for a fact I don't utilize this tool to its fullest potential and I can't help that it's just that this is one of those tools that is hit or miss for me when using it I use it to rip down pieces of quarter inch plywood when I'm taking it over to the scroll saw to make it more manageable sizes and again it will just comes right on and runs smoothly and it's one of those older big um, three wheel models that have the huge long I think it's an 82 inch or 84 inch um, blade more storage on this wall along with some decorations that I've added throughout the years the horror mask, the logo, the DuckTales, Scrooge McDuck and the anime banner I'm a huge anime fan and I like watching it in my free time again more storage via um, mason jars medicine bottles and you also have some lubricants for the chainsaw or for the lawnmowers stuff like that up here here is more stuff and this little area here that's never shown on camera is my unfinished scroll saw work all these projects are done the scroll work and the sanding I just have yet to stain them or add a backer board to them and get them clear coated my bottle cap collection then over here is my collection of woodworking books here is a ship's compass my pops give me this to go with the whole pirate theming and then these are my grandfather's rabbit trophies he was a Purina world champion rabbit breeder he won the trophy and I believe this middle one here is the world title and he took it I think Tennessee and the last time he won it they just said keep it don't bring it back you've won it so many times so that's nice to have out here to remember him and then several state fair um, ribbons right there from when he bred rabbits really awesome and then down here under this shelf you have a 
Jolly Roger, a Craftsman blade. Um, that was the one that came with the circular saw and I just never used it. Then here are all my C clamps, bar clamps. I have a roll of paper towels here and some extras right there. Always need those. Just some clamps, the miter gauge for the bandsaw. Down here we have a at least a hundred year old dresser. I have the bracket for the mirror. It's stored away elsewhere, but I took that off to use this. My grandfather helped me bring this in here. So that's just the idea of how long it's been in here. And I would like to eventually take this out and maybe put another workbench here, maybe dog leg this work table out. And maybe, I don't know. In here is all of my instruction manuals for all of the tools and accessories and then in this folder is grits of hand sandpaper it's just a great idea to store them you know I can organize them greatly and then here is the marathon Dremel tool that Sterling Davis give me I'm very humbled by this gift and I thank him for that and runs very quietly and smoothly real awesome down here is where I keep all my types of stain and extra drill bits, extra um, screws and everything. There is gloves for staining and everything and then all the attachments for the shop vac for when I hook it to the table saw and everything. Then right here is the Craftsman collection that I have so far. Now all these tools are mine personally that I've got in the last three or four years. I love them. They're great tools. They're powerful. And again, for what I do out here in the workshop, it's suited me well. And I've got two chargers, three batteries. There's the accessory bag with bit kits, driver bits, and a set of drill bits to just stow in the truck and take somewhere. There is my sticker. There is my original banner. If you guys remember, this was the very first banner I had on the back wall. My ear protection and dust mask that I wear. I also have one of these type of dust masks that just kind of velcro onto your face and then again here we have the sticker swap sticker wall just amazing and blessed how it has grown and then I'll turn this heater off it makes a little noise over here in this corner you have the Jaws portrait that I designed and cut out as a video my Jolly Roger another Steve Good pirate design right here the Cobalt Tools Clock, the British Flag, the Union Jack, and my Jack Sparrow Replica Pirate Sword. And then here's the Plasma Ball and my grandfather's old radio that still works. I have a jar of sand over here in the corner just to remind me of the beach. Up here on this shelf is just some mementos and stuff from my life. Um, I'm a huge horror fan. I love Jason. That mask there is actually autographed by Kane Hodder. Um, a flag from Pirate's Voyage, a Myrtle Beach pennant, a pirate ship, and then several ships that I've also 3D printed. And then a trophy that I actually won for cosplaying as a pirate at the very first um, North Carolina Comic Con. So that's real cool. I'm a huge wrestling fan, or I used to be. I uh, don't like the current product, but I mean... Kane was always my favorite, just the mystery behind the character, a replica Batman mask, some replica NASCAR cars, again, and then here are some photos of just me and some of my friends. There's me with Blackbeard's sword, my friends at Pirate's Voyage, and that's me as the pirate, and then with my steampunk friends, and then with my friend who walks on stilts, it was a Ringland Brothers clown at one point and then some of my friends in sawdust and people that I have worked for and done projects for and then the most important spot is here this is the scroll saw era area I mean and one thing I always encourage people to do is decorate your workspace to something that inspires you so here is the scroll saw that I'm using now it is the Delta 20 inch here is the little wall around it and this artisan pirate word here that was my very first YouTube video so I'm happy to have that there the local makerspace laser engraved this piece of cardboard with my name on it there is a pirate action figure of Jack Sparrow 
and then here is my promotional picture um, sorry about the glare but that is me dressed up as the pirate really awesome my little promo photo some other stuff here the old license plate that used to be on the truck I have a newer one up there now and then here is the older scroll saw that I always used in my original videos and this is my baby I've took good care of her throughout the years again my grandfather bought this and then this clamp that I modified I get a lot of questions about this is a craftsman upper blade clamp for their scroll saws and I ground it down you can see the silver here where I scraped off the paint grinding it down to fit the Delta scroll saw because their clamps are now discontinued there is a table saw blade autographed with everyone that helped put on Maker Faire Burlington which was a great event that's no longer around unfortunately I hope it comes back one day but the last few um, couple years it's been gone and then here we have all of my little tools for the scroll saw and exacto knife and it's always good to have this or something with a point to poke out small internal cuts if they get caught I have a little measurer pencils um, a paintbrush to knock dust out of small delicate areas and then all the scroll saw blades I use and then the number one blade that I always use is right here number five reverse tooth sharp tooth scroll saw blades they're available through the Winfield collection and scroller they send me their catalogs but I highly highly recommend these blades I usually buy three or four dozen at a time I think they're like three fifty a dozen for the blades and the more you buy the more you save the scroll saw is on an angle that just helps because I sit in my workbench there also there's the air compressor for the air tools and my trash can but I sit down when I'm scrolling and so with the scroll saw being on an angle that just reduces neck fatigue if you're hunched over you know it just makes it more comfortable and also with it being on an angle usually when I finish an internal cut and lift it off the blade the waste will fall right down into the bucket in the scrap bucket and then when that gets full I dump that in the wood stove and then down here underneath is the original two-speed Delta scroll saw where I used a tennis ball to fix the bellows on it and everything and then also went to the makerspace and 3d printed an insert for it before I had my own 3d printer they were kind enough to do that for me really awesome and with this scroll saw I love it I've got it hooked to a foot pedal and it runs super smooth super quietly and for people that's wondering I've got it between five and six on the speed and my tension is three and a half and finally this is the view you guys see or I see whenever I'm filming I'm looking at this back wall and then you guys are seeing this wall I hope you like this tour I'm about to put the camera back on the tripod and give you my final thoughts. Again, that is the full complete shop tour. I am so sorry if it was long winded or drawn out and you found yourself skipping through parts. That was the only way that I know how to film a shop tour other than taking the camera and the tripod and setting it up every single where you know that I wanted to show something off it was just more organic to just freehand it if you guys like this style of video please let me know if not also let me know so I know not to do it again in the future again if you guys want a sticker swap with me contact me through a social media or let me know so I can get a sticker out to you guys I have a lot of great and amazing content planned for 2021 for anyone who's curious about the measurements the workshop is 12 wide by 24 inch long I mean 24 foot long 12 wide 24 foot long and so it's really narrow I can about touch either side of the wall doing this I'm six foot two I'm taller I'm the tallest person in my family funnily enough you know it's kind of strange but all in all I hope you guys like this tour I hope you guys stay tuned if you're new here please subscribe if you're a returning person please give me a thumbs up and let me know what you thought of this shop tour most people will take weeks 
in advance to a shop tour video and clean up and want their shop to be as presentable as possible. I didn't want to go that route. I did sweep up and get all the sawdust up, but other than that, this is in between projects. I've got some projects I'm about to throw on the scroll saw and start making more sawdust this year, but I just done it in between projects. This is right after Christmas and New Year's break, so I didn't want to have a super clean shop because I don't think that's real if that makes any sense. I want it to be as organic and natural as possible. I hope you guys like it. Remember guys, if I can make it or do it, so can you. I'm the Artisan Pirate. Stay tuned for more woodworking videos and I'll see you guys real soon.